Hey guys, I'm Mel and today I'm going to do my April wrap up. The first book I read is Labyrinth Lost by Zoraida Cordova. This is about a bruja who, while doing a spell to get rid of her powers, she banishes her entire family. So she has to go on this quest to find them. Overall, this was a very entertaining book. I enjoyed the story and the magic system that was based a lot on Mexican culture. I love that we get to explore one of the aspects that I believe is one of the most important things when you talk about Latinx culture and that is family. I also love how we got a bisexual Latina main character, but I wasn't really on board with the attempt of a love triangle. In general, there was this sense of uniqueness and opportunity that got missed just because it was such an amazing plot that could have gone deeper. As the first book in a series, it was very strong and I'm sure we're going to see more in the next books, so I gave it 3 stars. Then I read the fourth and fifth book in the Gibbs Like series by Rose Crystal. The fourth book is Why the Star Stands Still and the fifth book is called Lending Light. This is a series about a Native American and specifically a Shoshone community and in Why the Star Stands Still we get to see the same characters but 15 years after the main story and in Lending Light we follow the same story that we got in the first books but from the perspective of the other other guy in the relationship. As with all the other books in the series, these books were delightful to read. Rose Crystal's writing is everything I love about literature, with beautiful and in-depth description, with complex characters that get better and better with time, who grow and change but their personalities are still the same. There was so much commentary and calling out that are intertwined with the stories and the legends from the Shoshone tribe and I definitely think it's one of my favorite series. Then I read Songs of Our Breakup by J.E. Tria. This is about a girl who is trying to get over a seven-year relationship, but the problem is that her ex-boyfriend is the lead guitarist in the band where she is the vocalist. So when Shinta, one of her best friends, comes back from Japan, she starts trying to figure out her life after her relationship. This was incredibly adorable and wonderfully diverse. I was so happy to see so many interesting, complex, but at the same time so many lovely characters. The lyrics that the band wrote were a beautiful addition to this wonderful book. I love how the lyrics were intertwined with the past and the present of the band. It's also a non voices story, the main character is Filipino and the love interest is Japanese and I gave this 4 stars. Then I read The Weight of Feathers by Anna Marie McLemore. This tells the story of the Palomas and the Corvo, who have been rivals and enemies for over a generation. And even though Lace has heard stories about the Corvo's black magic, one of them saves her life and makes her question everything that she's been told about them. This book is the depiction of why I love magical realism. It was such a gorgeous book with beautiful and eerie writing and that is intertwined with culture and identity in a very interesting way. The very lyrical writing style confirms that Anna Marie McLemore is one of my new favorite writers. It held my attention and it made me fall in love not only with the characters but also with the atmosphere and the descriptions, so I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. Then I read Ascension by Jacqueline Koyanagi. This is a sci-fi book about Alana who is a spaceship surgeon, but since she's chronically ill and she can't pay for her bills, when she gets the chance she stows away in this beautiful spaceship whose crew is looking for her sister, but she takes this opportunity to go in this adventure. If you want to read a gorgeously diverse own voices sci-fi book, this is the one for you. This is a book that encompasses a lot of different things, not just one thing. Yes, it's a sci-fi book, but it also had this queer, polyamorous, intricate relationship between the captain of the ship and her main character who is a sky surgeon who is also black and has this chronic illness. It also goes deeper because she can't pay for her treatment 
it's also about this very complex sister relationship that grows as the book progresses. If this doesn't sound badass to you, I don't know what will. I gave it 4 stars just because I was left with a lot of questions. Then I read Trade Me by Courtney Millan. This is about Tina who is in a situation of poverty while being a student in this university. So she doesn't have time for Blake who is a billionaire who thinks he knows everything about poverty. But when Blake offers her a trade in which he is going to live her life and she is going to live his, she can't refuse. I don't know what to tell you, this book completely blew my mind. Because who knew that when I said that I wanted to read something cute and fluffy I was going to have also a lot of commentary on privilege, race, class and identity while also getting this fun and beautiful love story. This takes all the tropes you read and completely transforms them. Apart from that, Tina is the daughter of two Chinese refugees and Blake has an eating disorder and all of that is super explored. So I gave it 4.25 out of 5 stars. Then I read The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. This is about Molly who has had a lot of crushes but she's never done anything about it. So when her sister gets a girlfriend they decide that Molly's new crush should be this girlfriend's best friend. But there is also this other guy that might catch Molly's eye. This was super adorable. The representation and the construction of the characters and the story is so important. And we had these subtle inclusions and discussions about so many different things while maintaining this super light atmosphere. Molly is a very flawed character in this complexity and intricacy that she has. I absolutely love how this book was written. Bekel Bertali has a skill to write teenagers and simple but at the same time thought-provoking plot that I want to know what happens to every character that she creates. I had a few problems with it but in general I loved it and I gave it 4 stars. Then I read Gikerela by Ashley Poston and it's about Elle who loves this sci-fi series that she grew up watching with her dad. So when she sees a cosplay competition for the reboot movie of that show, she has to participate. And it's also about Darian who is the actor in that film. And they meet each other through text but they don't know who the other person is. Gigerela is everything I hope from a Cinderella retelling. It's cute, fluffy and adorable. This worked for me because there is such a lovely character. He stayed with his feet on the ground all the time. I also love that he was Indian and there was these discussions on whitewashing and representation in movies. Unfortunately, I thought that everything was too predictable because it stayed too close to the original story and I couldn't separate it from the original story, so I give it 3.5 stars. Then I read Super Sick by Aileen Kaur Aiden. This is the first volume of the comic book about a secret agent who is overworked trying to save the world. So he takes this vacation to the US. But then this Taliban group tries to follow him to America. I know this is just the introduction to this world, but it was so well done. Like the illustrations and the colors were absolutely gorgeous. And I can honestly say I want to read more from this. I also love that it was on voices and I love the story behind it. So I gave it four stars. Then I read Saga Volume 5 by Brian K. Bond and Fiona Staple. This is the fifth book, you know what Saga is. I really really enjoyed this volume. I feel like I'm getting into the story again. And there were so many new adventures in this universe that just keeps me reading. So I give it four stars. Hey, sorry for the change of everything. I had to pick up my mom from the airport, so I'm going to continue. Then I read Haven by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This is about Claudia and Shep and how their lives are linked after this terrible tragedy. So they help each other to cope with what comes after that. So they begin an intense and passionate relationship in the middle of a mountain and it's one of my new favorite books. The entire plot was crafted with so much care. I always appreciate authors that put characters in traumatic situations and they deal with it because that is not an easy thing to do. I think even though therapy is a very important part of the healing process, knowing yourself, your limits and what makes you feel good and 
and bad are also important in this process to get to a healthy place. This book deals with trauma and PTSD with such delicacy but also rawness and it also helped that the writing was beautiful. It also had so much consent, communication and complicated conversations. There was also BDSM and a dog, so I gave it 5 stars. Then I read There's No Place Like Here by Cecilia Hearn. Since Sandy's childhood classmate disappeared 20 years ago, she has been obsessed with missing things. So when she grows up, she starts working in finding missing people and giving hope to their family. Jack is one of those people. His brother disappeared one year ago and Sandy was supposed to help him except Sandy and goes missing as well. This is a very unique book with a very unique premise. I was definitely curious about how this book was going to end and how everything was going to come together and it definitely blew my mind at some points. I just felt that we could have had more of it. Also I feel like the idea that no one understood Sandy's compulsion was really unrealistic and the one person who might have understood started a relationship with her that was super unhealthy. In general there were good and bad things about this book, there was a very eerie atmosphere all the time. I wasn't very blown away, so I gave it three stars. Finally, I read Hold My Hand by A.C. Oswald. This is about two girls in a relationship, but then one of them apparently cheated and they break up but they meet one year after only to know that the girl who apparently cheated didn't really cheat but she has cancer. I can honestly say this book was very adorable. Even though there was a heavy topic all the time and we knew how it would end, it wasn't very like heavy in the emotions. Honestly, I felt like this book tried too much to be The Folding North Stars and especially A Walk to Remember, the movie, not the book. But honestly, I appreciated that the story is on voices, but I just couldn't get past these things that I didn't like. The girl who has cancer, she has her family who is Hispanic of some sort. They don't tell us where they come from, they don't tell us about their identities. All the characters were very flat, we don't know much about them, we don't know much about their life, and I gave it two stars. Okay, that's everything for April. Sorry if this was super long. Hope you like this. If you did, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye!